Hi, it's Paul Tizard. I'm a fear of flying coach and I can help you overcome your fear of flying in 30 days or less. Now, today we're going to be talking about a question which comes up a hell of a lot over the years. And over the last 25 years that I've been helping people just like you, the question that comes up is how many people are actually scared of flying? What, what, are, what are the stats? What's the research? You know, so I'll put a little bit of time into this. And one of the things that I've found over the years is that actually it hasn't shifted that much. So I'm not sure what you think it might be, but the figures have stayed around about the same. So the first time that anybody really measured what is the amount of fear of flying that's actually out there was back in the 80s. And it was something that was carried out by Boeing. And they reckoned it was between one in four adult Americans. One in four. So that's back in the 80s. In the around 2001, I think I, there was some Gallup research that suggested it was around one in five. So not much of a shift, is it? So we still see the set, the general trend. Now, whether people actually admit to it or not is another thing. In 2012, I came across some research in the UK, which suggested that it was 30% of the population. So I don't know what that works out as, is one in something. Um, but it's a lot, isn't it? 30 percent. I have some level of fear of flying and that was from Cranfield University. 2014, uh, the US, one in three, one in three. And in the UK, one in four, according to YouGov. So it's not changed that much. I was looking again just a couple of years ago and again, it's still around one in four. One in four people have some fear of flying. That doesn't mean that people admit to it. So I was just want to read you through some things that I came across. Let me just grab this bit of research here. So in 2017, YouGov ran a, a poll with uh, aviophobes. What's the name for it? In case you didn't know. And uh, this is what people thought about flying. So 57% of those with the fear of flying will still fly. And this is something that I found. So probably about half of the people that come on the courses that I run and used to run would still fly anyway, but they just don't like it. So they, they fly, but they have various rituals and patterns that they do that keeps them safe. You know, keeps everybody else safe, keeps the aircraft safe. And if these little rituals are not observed, then woe betide the airline and indeed their own safety. Uh, and that's the way it works. So people have this sort of like set of beliefs that keep them flying. But yeah, so about half of the people would fly anyway. And the rest either have never flown or they flew and then thought, sod that, I'm not doing that anymore and stopped flying. Um, it was interesting. So 81% of the nervous flyers would not consider a fear of flying course. I'm guessing that they fly, but under duress, or uh, maybe they have to have some assistance, you know, from a relative or from alcohol, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, there was 57% of those with a fear of flying will still fly, um, and 26% believe the safest seat is an aisle seat. 20% believe the safest seat is at the back of the aircraft. And 46% believe that no part of the plane is safe whatsoever. <laughs> um, we were also were asked, uh, so they were also asked at the time, who did you perceive to be the safest airlines? And it's interesting because depending on, the, on which country you ask this, it's nearly always the national airline comes out near the top because they think because it's government endorsed in some way, even if it's in the ancient history, uh, you know, Air of Blood or British Airways, etc., where they might have been state owned. I don't think British Airways is now. I'm not sure about Air of Blood. I don't think it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, so an airline that's perceived to be linked to the government is automatically safer. So, there you go. Didn't you know that? So, what are people actually scared of? What would you think? In my experience, it tends to range between a number of options. 
typically people think it's terrorism. People always say, oh, it's, it's got to be terrorism because of the 9-11 attacks or similar things. 7-11 in um, the UK where they checked that people were targeted on the trains and buses, et cetera, et cetera. So general acts of terrorism. Now, of course, that is a factor, but it's not the top one. The top one, believe it or not, in my experience, is lack of control. Lack of control. I'm not in control of what goes on. Whereas in my car, I'm in control. I can pull over, therefore I'm safer. Yeah. It doesn't always work like that, but that's in our brain what we think. According to the research from UGov in 2017, which is what I'm referring to now, 68% uh, it was technical failure. Hmm. That seems quite high to me. 61% uh, was turbulence. 56% um, was bad weather while flying and only 38% was terrorism. Now my experience or my thoughts on that, that some of those figures, I mean, I'm not going to argue with the research. The research is the research. But anecdotally, having seen thousands of people come through the doors, I would say the number one is lack of control. Then it's turbulence. Weather, which includes air pockets, of course, which we all know doesn't exist, but in people's minds, I fell thousands of feet. That must have been an air pocket because that term's been out there. And, and it could also have been triggered by a particularly bad experience. Now, funny enough, if you fly and you've, you're not feeling great, you can often associate it wrongly with the flight. And so if you're unwell in some way, any way, shape or form, you might think, oh, I'm, you know, flying doesn't just doesn't agree with me. You know, I've just I just don't like it. I don't feel safe. And that's a lot to do with other things as well. But it can also have been triggered by one bad flight. So typically a lot of people will say the reason that I got the fear of flying was a flight, a particular flight. That was it. And that, a lot of people will say that. Now, the interesting thing for me is that when you actually investigate a little bit further, you find that, that some of those people that say that were already a little bit unsure of flying anyway. So it wasn't a complete surprise to them to develop a fear of flying. Another trigger can be and this I saw a lot, is when people become parents. When men and women become parents, because I'm guessing maybe it makes us feel more mortal. Um, now we have this huge responsibility and it triggers our brain to think, I need to protect myself. I need to think about all the threat situations that are around. And one of those that is linked in their brain is the fact that flying is just unsafe because I don't understand it. I'm not in control of it. I can't just pull over. Anything could happen once I'm up there, that's it. So you can understand there is some logic to it. But those would be my, the main ones that I would say I've spotted over the years. Now, what can be done? Now, the reality is beating a fear of flying is not normally a one day event. So even when I used to run one day events, I used to know that those people would either have done some work already, so they're perhaps talking to somebody, they've already done some research, they're starting to think differently about flying altogether and their own safety assessment. They don't, it's not just a kind of like, I'm absolutely petrified, terrified, 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 and that's it, it's all removed with one day. No, don't get me wrong, that does happen for a small number of people for most people though it's part of a process so the course itself if it's at the beginning of that process they still have some work to do or if it's near the end of the process they still have some work to do because it's about doing the fear of flying beating at your pace there is no one speed there is no kind of do these three funny techniques and that's it all gone and I know some people will talk about that, but I'm a little bit loath to go down that route. So I think it's a process and it's about understanding a little bit about, you know, how the brain works and how you learn fear, but then retraining yourself. Because the reality is nobody was born with a fear of flying. As I've said many times before, it's something that we learn. I'm not the first person to say that. 
but that's really true so when we learn a fear and then we practice it we get really good at it and that's what happens with fear of flying so whether it's turbulence or air pockets or technical failure or the pilots i don't sound too confident or i don't they sound too young too old or whatever it is it is generally something that we've identified with and then we practiced it and got better and better at it that is how fear of flying works and once it's embedded in your head then it becomes like easier and easier to do it because our brain is then expecting to feel like they did it did that time before and so we go crikey it's one of those stimuluses again i'm going to get the fear again it's going to send me into these symptoms but i want to tell you that all is not lost you're not born with this fear of flying it's just at the moment it's an incorrect assessment of risk so i'll say that again that your fear is an incorrect assessment of risk there's nothing wrong with having fear is fear is really useful as a human species fear is phenomenally useful but it does get in our own way when it stops us doing things we want to do and it limits our choices okay so it doesn't have to be that way you can do something about it and that's why i think going on courses is great it gives you a chance to understand what might be happening and then as part of a process you can start to feel differently about your fear of flying and that is why i do it because i love seeing that moment when somebody gets that sort of you know like the aha oh, right i didn't know that i didn't know that there was all these backups in place i didn't know about all the procedures i didn't know that there isn't just one pilot there's always two or sometimes three and they rest and i didn't know there's no single point of failure that every single thing has a backup and another backup there's no single point of failure in an aircraft in a commercial aircraft and that just little things like that can start to knock the fear wobble its legs a bit so that the thing that's supporting the fear becomes less robust and once there's doubt in people's minds about whether they can hold on to that fear and whether it's actually useful for them they start to let it go and that's why it takes a little bit of time i think it can be done in less than 30 days i don't think it can be done in one day even though i ran courses that were one day i don't believe that anybody cured themselves in the day i think it gave them a massive help massive injection of positivity and information that was itself really really useful plus being surrounded by other people who are suffering from the fear of flying is massively massively helpful and i don't underestimate that but i think it's a process and it takes a little bit of time so all is not lost so you are normal there are many people that feel like you one in four one in five one in three whichever way you want to look at it a lot of people feel just like you do but and it's the big but uh, it was learned this fear and it's never too late to learn something new okay thank you very much for listening hope you found that useful and uh, catch you again later